demon in hell will stop you. I said, no demon in hell will stop you. If you are that person that is going to receive a word tonight, can I hear the loudest amen? amen. First Samuel chapter 18, I read from verse 20. Hallelujah. Are we ready tonight? Bible says in verse 20, it says, And Micah, Saul's daughter, loved David. Please look at that word, loved David. It's not a present love, it's a past love, it's a continuous love, it's a love that is not ending. He said, and she loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Verse 21 says, and Saul said, I will give him her that she may be a snare to him and that the hand of the Philistine may be against him. Wherefore said Saul to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law, whether you like it or not. That's what it means in the one of the twine. My topic tonight is simply titled, Beware of Evil Snare. And I've come to let somebody know all the way from Nigeria that until you know who you are in Christ Jesus, the enemy will continue and continue and continue to put a snare on your way to success, on your way to victory, on your way to blessings, on your way to successful home. If you don't understand that on your way, there is always a trap or a booby trap, then you have not entered what we call the Christendom. Because on our way to our place, of accomplishment, that is where you will find out that the enemy is not sleeping. But I've come to let somebody know here tonight, there is a way of escape. No matter what the devil is bringing your way, God will grant you favor. God will grant you a way to go by. God will make sure that whoever he has been planted to bring you down. I tell you here tonight, uh, you will fly above all your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, let your amen be the loudest. Father, thank you tonight. I bless your word. Because, Lord, let your word permeate us, O God, and let it turn us inside out that we will become a new man. It will give us a new heart. It will give us a new perception, a new thinking, a new order. Thank you because surely, indeed, you will move in this house tonight. We we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to know that God is a God who respects his principles. He's no respecter of anybody, but he respects his principles. No matter how born again you are and how tongue-talking you are or how Bible-reading and demon-chasing you are, there are some principles that God has set down. Uh, God will never do something in your life without your own permission. Because he has given us the free will. He has given us the, 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 the strength, the will to decide certain things in our lives. That is why God constantly talks to us, constantly reaches out to us, constantly makes us know that he's interested in our well-being. He wants to see where we will end up. That's why he said in Jeremiah, my thoughts towards you are not evil. They are thoughts of peace, good, to bring you to an expected end. Uh, Amplified Version says to give you a hope and a future because he's interested in everything that is happening in your life. I'd like you to help me touch somebody and say, God is interested in you irrespective of where you are from, whether you are Caucasian, African, American, Indian, whoever you are, you are in the list and in the plan of God. And once you are in the plan of God, he already has a future set out for you. He has a roadmap. He has a place that you are going to get to. And that's why the devil is annoyed. He's just annoyed and annoyed and annoyed that how come you are given a lot of priority? You have given a lot of uh, first-class uh, tickets to, to be with God. How come you are given such a, a, a kind of, a kind of uh, preference? Hallelujah. 
a kind of preference when it comes to the things of God. And it's so amazing that the children of God themselves don't know that they are given that such kind of preference. We like to sit in the economy when God has given us the first class preference. Am I still talking to somebody here? Uh, we like to be at the back when God has given us the first place to sit. Uh, we like to, 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 to dwell with the things which are mediocre, which are average. When he said, I wish above all things. You see, because he said, I wish, is because he knows that you will not want to get there. He, he said, I wish above all things that you be in health and prosper, even as your soul prosper. All the thoughts of God. Am I still talking to somebody here? Uh, all the thoughts of God in our life is to see us at the top and not at the bottom. Top your hand. Just lift up your hand a little and say, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, I'm getting there. Hallelujah. I, I don't know about you, but I'm getting there. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to understand in your life that God wants the very best for you. That's why I love the man called David. Oh, Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. This is somebody that I've never seen somebody who is so who has committed so much offense, yet he knows how to run back to God. I've never seen somebody who knows how to deal with another person's husband, yet he knows how to go back to God and say it's a mistake. Hallelujah. I've never seen somebody who, who can fight all day long and tell and tell himself, I desire some water, and yet people will kill people to go and get the water only for him to get the water and pour it back again and say, This is my God. Because his heart is constantly panting after God. If your heart is panting after God day in and day out, let me tell you something. The truth is that you will always be on God's agenda. You will always be on God's agenda once your heart is panting after God. And that's why it's very, very difficult for somebody called Saul to deal with David. Because he has been looking for opportunities. He has been looking for a way by which he could deal with David. He, he tried all he could. He even invited David into his presence so that he can toss a javelin towards him. All his plan failed. Not because he was not an accurate shooter, but because there was something about David. Ah, when God is for you, no devil can be against you. One with God is like a majority. I tell you something here. When God stands with you, nobody can stand against you. Bible says they that be for us are more than they that be for them. Because when God stands with you, you are expected to be at the top. So Saul tried all that he could until one day, one day, there is always one day. Oh my God, there is always one day. There's always one day for you to be elevated. There's always one day for your story to change. There's always one day for your things to turn around. There's always one day for your situation to take a new turn. There's always one day for your victory to come. And your day is today. That amen is not born again enough. I say, let me hear a thunderous amen. One day, they told Saul that your daughter loved david ladies and gentlemen I, I i seem to be thinking in my spirit and say what is wrong in saul's daughter loving david nothing i mean it's one of the greatest thing that anybody could pride in because this is a this is some this is a young lady who fell in love even when david did not even know praise god because david was a victorious man Somebody who knows where he's going. Are you getting me here? And this young lady fell in love with David. And Bible says they told his father. They didn't tell the person he fell in love with. They told his what? Be careful. <laughs> Be careful what you fall in love with. Am I talking to somebody here? Uh, some of you don't see, get where I'm going here. Be careful what you fall in love with. Some of us fall in love with the wrong things. And at the end of the day, it becomes a snare to us. Or you fall in love with, can I go on, sir? You fall in love with chocolate. And it becomes a snare to you. You fall in love with uh, let me not ma make names of, of, of brands, but you fall in love with some sodas. Oh, you can't do without it. And it becomes a what? 
Oh, you, you're there, you're there. Hallelujah. I know, I'm in, I know I'm in a good house here tonight. Are you getting where I'm going here? And it becomes a challenge. Because there is nothing wrong in a young lady falling in love with David. Until his father said, this is a good news to me. What she fell in love with, I'm going to use this opportunity to turn it to my advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, Bible says in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Let me tell you something in case you don't know. The devil is looking for every avenue by which he could he could truncate your destiny. He could stop where you are going. He could remove you from where God has already ordained for you. So he's looking for what he can use in your life to set you up, to put it as a trap in your life. Some of you, oh my goodness, I'm still going to get there. But some of you can use your eye to see some certain things. And those things has become a snare to you. Your eyes cannot see some clothes. Hallelujah. Your eyes cannot see some shoes. Your eyes cannot see some cars your eyes oh my god somebody do i have some people in the house here your eyes cannot see some shirts there are some things right now that you can tell yourself i will kill to get this i thought i'm the only one who has made that statement before oh help me tap somebody and say he's talking to you <laughs> what you don't understand is that the enemy is using this at the word as a trap setting you up oh you say but pastor are you telling me i should not have the best things in life come on i didn't say that but whatever you love so much that will take the place of god in your life you are in trouble thank you sir <laughs> i'm getting there i'm getting there i have a pastor friend here in here in america who loves wristwatches so much before he buys anything for God, he will buy his rich watch. He actually has like, like, I'm not exaggerating, like two rich watches every month. Different make. He keeps buying it until he was delivered. Amen. Amen. Mention all the brands. He knows it. I wish I knew it. Praise God. Amen. It got so bad one time. My wife had to call me inside the room. I said, I will dress you from today. I said, what is this? Because just give me my tie, give me my suit, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Amen. Because I, I, when it comes to God, it's God. Amen. I mean, I need to let you understand that this thing has become so, so challenging in the body of Christ that we, we love some other things and we neglect the love of God. When it comes to finances, nobody talks to you about it. Because you love your finances more than God. And the enemy used that as, an, as a snare. When it comes to your family. <laughs> uh, nobody talks to me when it comes to my family. I don't go to church. Leave, leave, leave us alone. And the enemy said, yeah, that's, that's the place I want him to be. Because it turns what you love so much. And sets a snare. For you what is a snare I, I needed to go look at the dictionary when i study some things i found two definitions of a snare the first says is a device used to catch small animals you know birds especially ones that holds their legs so that they cannot escape uh, that's a very good snare. You know, many people don't understand is that the devil is looking for where to hold in your life whether in your, your hand your leg your head wherever he can get Samson's problem was the lap of Delilah. That was his snare. Every time Samson goes to visit Delilah and he puts the head on the lap. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his anointing was eroding. And he never knew. It's funny, but that's the truth. Amen. He thought he would go out the same way he used to go out. Ah. They've set a trap for you all this while. And what you love the most, the lap of Delilah, drained your anointing. Help me look at somebody and say, is he talking to you? <laughs> 
And some of you might be here. I mean, your, your snake could just be your books. You say, how can that be? Yes. Hello? I know why I came here. I'm reading 24 hours before you know I, I had the roommate who went nuts because he did not know how to socialize. I'm serious. In college. One day I just came back to the room and I saw him. And, ah! But you, <laughs> I called. Then we don't have phone calls. Uh, phone, phone. But I, I wrote notes. I, the next trailer that was going to Lagos. Amen? I, <laughs> sorry for that. Amen? The next truck that was going to Lagos. <laughs> I gave them the letter. Hallelujah. Come and pick your son. <laughs> He's going nuts. I mean, we'll tell him, let us go out and have... No. He's always solving. It became a trap to him. I had some people in school in those days who made me look as if I was not reading. 24 hours, they're always going to school, uh, to the class. And here I am. <laughs> Mine was just like seven, I mean, four hours. And they will start from 8 a.m. They will take it through the night. And by 5 a.m., they are coming with their lanterns and what have you. Oh, we've read today. I say, <laughs> did they send you to go to school at all or you came to play here? When the result came out, all those three ladies, I won't forget them, they were withdrawn. They didn't cross over to the next level with us. Now, I didn't make the grade I wanted, but at least I sat up. <laughs> because when I saw the people who read, hello, <laughs> the race is not given to the swift, not the battle to the strong, but it is God. <laughs> Romans chapter 9, verse 16, that showed mercy. You can't but stand with him you can't but sit with him you can't but understand your god and that is one thing that you can't joke with david about because david understood god so Saul said that we plant my daughter as a snare in his life the second definition of a snare that i loved and i will use tonight as i as i as i get on with this message, is a situation which seems attractive but is unpleasant and difficult to escape from. A very, is a situation which seems so attractive. That deal is so attractive. You're going to make like uh, $30,000 a day, but you are ready to break every rule. Governing Christianity just because you must hammer. Sorry for my language. Amen. Are you with me? Just because you must get there. No, the devil is looking for how to set a trap for you. Why not do it rightly? Why not do it properly? Why not do it as it's been done? There was a story of a minister of God who saw a prominent indigen of the town in the church. And he began to preach because he saw the prominent and wealthy indigen. And began to tell him, ah, this is what God will do for you. This is what God will do for you. This is what God will do for you. And at the end of the day, the prominent indigen left the church because he saw his burning. He needed somebody that would tell him the truth. And he went to somebody somewhere else. And this man of God saw him and told him that if you don't give your life to Christ, you will be born in hell. You have stolen people's money. You have done all sorts of things. And these are the things that you need to do. And he felt for the first time something pricked his heart to come and give his life to Christ. Because he heard somebody who spoke to what he was actually doing in life. You don't need to look at the physical realm to understand that God is working in the spiritual. Are you listening to me here this evening? 
Because the devil is out to set a trap for you and I. And it's not going to come in the form of a two-horned monster or a long-tailed monster or you're going to see a red cloth monster. No, that's not how the devil is going to show up. Guess what? He's going to show up in cake. Chocolates. When you eat it, you sit down at, at, at the restaurant and eat a whole big cake. Re help me now. Ice cream. Uh, the children will say, what is this man saying? Pastor, why did you bring him? Hallelujah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no, no. I'm not saying don't eat all those things. But when it becomes the love of your life, it becomes a snare. Can I share Genesis chapter 22 with you again? Is somebody still with me here tonight? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Beware of evil snare. The devil is out to snare you up. In Genesis chapter 22, I read from verse 1. Bible says, And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Verse 2. He says, And he said, Take now thy son. Please take note of this. Jesus, God now defined it very well. He said, Thine only son. No, no, didn't God know he's his only son before he gave it to him? But look at what followed after. He said, Whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, Upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Now, 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 now. Some of you will think that God just wanted to tempt Abraham on this issue. Listen to me. The faithfulness, the, 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 the faith of Abraham is never in doubt. It's not, I mean, God has been testing Abraham before now. But you see, there was something that took the attention of Abraham from God. Oh, you say, what was that? When Isaac came, Bible says, the one that thou loved, was it not God he used to love? But all of a sudden, the son of his old age came on board. And Isaac, for the first time at the age of almost 101, began to feel like a father that can play baseball with the son. Oh, somebody, are you still with me here? He began to feel like somebody who can't say, let us go, hey boy. All the fellowship he used to have. Golden states and uh, let's, let's go. <laughs> all the stuff that he used to have with God, all of a sudden, was nowhere to be found. I mean, God wanted to destroy a whole nation. He said, will I do it without informing my friend? That's to tell you how knitted they are together. But that, that, that form, that relationship, all of a sudden began to erode. Just like some of you right now. When you're looking for something, you knew God. You loved God. But all of a sudden, when the thing had been gotten, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I am so busy. I need to get to. I need, oh my God, am I sitting I, I need to, I need to be here. I, you don't understand, Pastor. I have a meeting. God said, I will test him. Don't love something too much to allow God to test you. Because you might not survive it. Hallelujah. He said, I will test him. Abraham. How many of you know that's not his only son? Because there were some sons on board before Isaac. But he said, thou whom, because if he had said, thy son. I would have just brought Isaac. He said, you smell, sorry. He said, yeah, yeah, you, 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 yeah, you, you come, you come. Because that's not... <laughs> <laughs> Are you still with me here? Because that's not the one he loved the most. So God had to define it. The one whom you love. Stop buying Givenchy. <laughs> 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 
Save up the money for your wedding. Stop buying iPhone 6. What's the difference between iPhone 5 and iPhone 6? There is seven. You know, some of us are still using Motorola. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still with me here? <laughs> Come on, jump the cells together for you. When you get to love something very much, the enemy begins to look how to put a snare on it. I got a wonderful car one time. It was the latest, you know, of Hondas. And I enjoyed that car. Oh my goodness, my accord. I loved it so much because when I cruised down the streets, everybody said, Pastor D, I say, hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> Only for me to get home one of those years and God said, the car must go. I said, which one? <laughs> Not this one. Devil, I bind you. <laughs> Whichever voice is telling me this, I cast it away in the name of... I didn't sleep two days. That car must go. I said, which car? Lord, do you know how I got this? Do you know? There was no excuse I didn't give. That car must go. Ladies and gentlemen, when that car left, I had peace. Three more cars came after us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I have come to understand that you cannot allow the enemy to use whatever you love to become a snare. That's the issue with Abraham. And Abraham understood perfectly. He said, Lord, he didn't even argue. He didn't even tell Sarah. Because if you had told Sarah, Sarah will now tell you that my bone again was 90%. Because I should... Because I wouldn't have given birth at the age of 90. And which year will I not give another birth? You know, there's some 1% in us that... That we speak the truth when it comes up. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the age of 90, I gave birth. Which year will I give another one? Which year? <laughs> then they would now tell you all the whole story. So Abraham quietly packaged the boy in the money. Saddled him upon the ass. Called some servants and said, guys, let's go. We have a sacrifice. In fact, when Sarah heard that they are going for sacrifice, he said, Isaac, run and follow your father because you must learn the ways of your father. What he did not understand was that that was the sacrifice. That was the sacrifice. Abraham had gotten to the stage that his relationship with God cannot be toyed with. Don't let any snare hold you down with your relationship with your God. If you are clapping, clap for Jesus. Why must we be, uh, why must we be careful and, and be watchful of evil snare? You know, snare doesn't just come by way of uh, we expecting it. Hallelujah. Men bring snare. In the book of Proverbs chapter 29, if you have it, I hope somebody's gotten, getting something this evening. Help me tell somebody close to you and say, beware of evil snare. Yeah, that bag you are planning to buy. <laughs> it may be a snare. You have more important things to do than to commit yourself to buy that bag. In the book of Proverbs chapter 29, in verse 25, the Bible says, are you there? Verse 25. It says, the fear of man bringeth what? A snare. So you see, that's another huge problem in itself. If you are afraid of man, you will constantly encounter traps on your way to success. God never made you to be afraid of anybody. I respect all men. 
but I'm not afraid of any man. That's my life. Maybe I came from a military setting. My father is a military officer when he retired. My immediate senior brother is, a, is going to be a general this year, as Brigadier General in the Nigerian Army. I've been around people who are not afraid of anything. And I am not, but I respect all men. Why? Because when you are afraid of men, they will become snare in your life. Love all men, but fear God. Fear God. That's the only person you should be afraid of. He who is able to kill the body and the soul. Are you listening to me here? Ah, the ancient of this. The unchangeable God. The one who is, who was, and who is to come. Who are you? Not to be afraid of him. He said the fear of man. Bring it what? Snare. So if you are not afraid, listen to me, respect your boss in the office, but don't be afraid of him. Don't you know I have the power to deal with you and send you out of here, send you out of whatever? He's just talking what is on his mind. But hear me, he does not have the final say. You serve the person who has the final say. You serve the person who has the final say. So if you like, you are not the one who has planned my life. The one who planned my life is up there. So if you like, you can take the temporary thing you have. But the one who has the final say is still there. So don't be afraid of any man. But please, respect. Hallelujah. Respect. I respect all men. But if you threaten my destiny, you will confront my God. If you threaten my destiny, you will confront my God. Are you listening to me here? Sorry to use this example, but I went to my hometown sometime in Nigeria. And, and five elders were, were standing. And they said, we know you. Went for a program. And I... As humble as I am, yes, sir, you know, we know how we greet and what have you. And as I was greeting, the fifth person left the line. And in my place, you dare not allow anybody to go without greeting him. So I ran after him. Ah, sir. He said, will you leave me alone? When I looked at him, I knew something was wrong. He said, you want to spoil what is on me? Some of you understand that, but don't worry. When I heard that, I knew that I was in the right place. I said, yes! I came closer again. What is on you? I want to know. <laughs> he said, let me. He began, he began to scream. I said, Father, in the name of you. Ah! I said, ah. <laughs> what was with me was already speaking. That's why you don't have to be afraid of any man. But when you begin to be afraid of a man, it has become a snare on its own. It has become a snare. Hallelujah. Man does not have final say over your destiny. Please, can somebody tell that to themselves and say, man does not have final say. Say it one more time. Say, man does not have final say over my destiny. Where you are going to is not a product of what man say. It's a product of what God has done. He has done it. What you are just doing is to chart your course to get there. So don't ever think that it is man that will guarantee where you are going to be. Because hear me, man will fail you. Man will fail you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. Man will fail you. They will disappoint you. They can promise you heaven and earth, but hear me, child of God, they will fail as long as you have not looked at them from the beginning let your source be god let it always be god and when it is god and god alone hear me child of god it may tarry bible says it will surely come i said it will surely come if you believe that shout a bigger amen hallelujah quickly open your bible so the book of psalms chapter 124 and i'm about to close I believe somebody is here that the Lord will demolish every snare on their road. Whoever has set a trap 
a snare in your journey to life, in your journey of success, in your journey of breakthrough, by the power and the grace of the name of Jesus and the grace upon this commission and the minister of God in this house, I decree every snare broken in the name of Jesus. Psalm 124. My goodness. I tell you something. God is about to do something right now. Glory be to God. Bible says in verse 1 of Psalm 1 to 4, he said, if it had not been, not Manu, if it has not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, you see, the word Israel there is actually talking about you. So what are you going to say? If it has not been for God who was on my side, what will I say? Are you listening to me here, child of God? Look at somebody and say, I'm going to say something good about myself. I'm going to say something good about my destiny. I'm going to say something good about where I'm going. I'm going to say something good about my life. Man, man, I put you down. Man, I said you will not amount to anything. Oh, no. There's somebody on your side. There's somebody on your side. Bible says here in verse 2, it says, if it has not been the Lord who was on our side. Now watch this. He said, when men rose up against us. Yeah, I'm a child of God, they will rise. It's part of nature. It's part of life. It's part of what we'll encounter. If they don't rise, you are not on the right path. Hello? If they don't rise, you are not on the right path. Have you seen drunkards and drunkards fellowship together? Oh, yeah. They will be going on the same path. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because nobody is telling anybody anything is wrong. <laughs> Praise God. If one falls down, the other picks it up. And they, they are going on the same path. But can you imagine yourself in the midst of drunkards? And won't you say, where am I going? Because why somebody still has his sanity. You ask yourself, where am I going? So Bible says, when men rose up against us, it is not going to be news that people will rise up against you. It's not going to be news that you will have issues in your marriage. Hello? It's not going to be news that you will have to run helter-skelter to find some solution here and there. Hello? But hear me. He said, when the Lord is on our side, why are you going where you are not meant to be? Even when men rose up, don't you know where to go? There is somebody on your side. Where is your neology? Where is your midnight prayer? Where is the time you tell to call on your God? Am I talking to somebody here? There is somebody on your side and he will never let you go. Help me lift up your hand. Say, I'm getting there. Say, I'm getting there. Say it one more time. Say, I'm getting there. I need to go because I need to close this. He said here in verse 3. Then they had swallowed us up quickly when their wrath was kindled against us. That's to tell you that yes, there might be some battles you will lose. Hello? But you have already won the war. Yes, you might have been knocked down. Your, 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 your boss might have said it's over. Your, your landlord might have said, well, quick notice. But guess what? It's not the end of your life. When they have done so many things for you, he will still tell you that get up. He never counts you out. You are not out. It's not over until it's over. And guess what? It's not over until I win. So I might have been knocked down 70 times. I'm still going to get up back 70 times. He said, yeah, in verse 4. He said, even in that process, he said, then the waters had overwhelmed us. Is somebody here that the waters have overwhelmed? You are high up there with debts. Looks as if your credit card is running out. Uh, it's credit, but it can still run out. <laughs> they seal it up. You can't get anything again. It looks as if everything has gone over your soul. 
But look at what he's even said. He said, then the proud waters. Proud waters are pro mockery waters. Waters that will mock you. Because of what you have loved, bad decisions that you have made. Things that you have done that you regretted. That why did I, why did I even try in the first place? Ladies and gentlemen, you are not the first person to be in that shoes. Neither will you be the last. It's going to happen. It has happened. It will continue to happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? But hear me. As you find yourself where these proud waters are speaking, where these proud waters are coming over your soul, Bible says in verse 6, it says, Bless the Lord! <laughs> That means in all these turns of trials and challenges, I will still open my mouth to say, bless. He said, bless the Lord who has not given us. Watch this. Who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. And I began to meditate on the scripture. He said, they are not giving us a, as a prey. Do, do, do you know that, do you know that the, the, the animal can capture you the animal can hold you down let's take for instance a, a, a lion holds you down but somehow the lion can take a bite out of you because he has not been given you say what is he talking about have you forgotten daniel he was thrown into the lions then yet lions we are going around him he was playing with lions as if they are pets because he has not been given as a prey. <laughs> hey, no matter the snare that the enemy has slayed on your road, I declare over your life, uh, you are not a prey to their teeth in the name of Jesus. I said, you are not a prey to their teeth in the name of Jesus. I said, you are not a prey to their teeth in the name of Jesus. I'm so sure because I know why. God will never leave his own stranded. He will never leave you stranded. God will never. I thought it was only the motto of Marines. Nobody is left behind. No, God does not leave his own behind. He doesn't. Oh, can I finish this please? Look at what he said in verse 7. He said, our soul. Yeah, 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 cut up. Our soul is escape as a bird out of the snare. It's not that the snare is not there, but you will escape. <laughs> eh, he said, man of God, you mean what I love like this? I'm sick of Yes, is you are going to what? Escape. He said, our soul is escape as a bird out of the snare of the fowler oh i love the scripture look at what he said he said the snare is broken and we are stand up on your feet tonight i am escaped i don't know about you Whatever snare that the enemy has placed over my life, whatever the snare that the enemy has put on my on the journey to my way to success, I am escaped. Tap somebody for me and say, I am escaped. I'm not a prey to their teeth. I'm not a prey to their teeth. We're going to take the next five minutes and we're going to pray. I don't know what is confronting your life. I don't know what is confronting your destiny. I don't know what is confronting you at your office. But hear me. You are not a prey to their teeth. You are escape. You are escape. You are escape. You are escape. Open up your mouth tonight. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to talk to God. Yeah. Kosele makate bala brando bokoya itolo si brande lekila la 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 basha pra porodo di adada masike de bakaya intole basu pre de bakaya my soul is escape my soul is escape. 
Open up your mouth. Whoever has said is not going to be. Whoever has said is not going to be done. Declare tonight. My soul is escaper. They can't locate me. They can't find me. Makoriba no bosu bagadaya. Eka pole basi prende bokoya bagada bagadaya. Seka bara 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 bara. I prende bosu prende katia bagada bagaya. Seka mabrando zibagada baya. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Escape your escape your escape. Lord, my soul is escaper. They can't find me. They can't find me. They can't get me. They can't locate me because I'm not with them, oh God. Rima Kodobo Subagaria Kadabakadaya. Ekopo Kotoleba Zibra Dabakaya. Open up your mouth and declare. My soul is escaper. My soul is escaper. Eka Branca de Bakoya Bagadabakaya. Nera Kodulobo Supreke de Gedegedegedea. Impala Bagodobosa. E Prado Supra Kadaya Bagadosa. Lord. I'm getting to my destination. I'm getting to my destination. Nothing will stop me. Nothing will hold me down. I'm going to get to where you have promised me. My soul is escape. I'm no longer a drug addict. My soul is escape. I'm no longer a drug addict. My soul is escape. I'm no longer one who doesn't know where he's going. My my soul is escaped. Lord, help me, Lord. One more, one more prayer point, and we are done. I'm going to hand over the mic to Pastor. Listen to me, because you need to learn the art of prayer very well. Hear me. When your soul is escaped, it does not make the trap not to come back again. But the Bible didn't say your soul is only escaped. He said the snare is what? Is broken. Tonight you are going to break it. And you are going to open up your mouth to pray. Whatever snare that is on my road to prosperity, my road to success, my road to victory, break every snare right now. Wherever it has been sent from, uh, break it, 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 break it. Break it, break it, break it, break it. Lord, I break every snare on my way, oh God. Thirty more seconds to pray that prayer. Reach out to God tonight. Press in somebody. Press in, press in, press in. Take what belongs to you tonight. Receive your freedom. He said, Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Whom the Son set free. Is free indeed. Take your freedom. Take your deliverance. Take your freedom. Take your deliverance. Take your freedom. Take your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. Come on, give me a better amen. Give me a bigger amen. Once again, let's appreciate the General Overseer of Glory House International Christian Center, Abuja. More anointing, more grace, Pastor. Thank you. God bless you. Take your seat for a couple of minutes. Amen. I was blessed. I saw myself shaking all through that ministration. And I know the Lord uh, was moving some things around. But very quickly, the Lord was downloading some things to me which I wanted to share with you also in line with what he has taught and he began to give me some examples i have about five ten minutes to do this. some examples of snares which he didn't mention and i had to take paper from somebody um, because to write them down hallelujah please write 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 if you're a worker 
you have to be coming to church with a notebook and pen. Because if I say, tell me everything he said, now you can't remember 2% of them. Get a pen and paper, write. Write. Amen. One snake can be sleep. Sleep. You know sleep? When a man or a woman is sleeping more than the required numbers of hours, it can be a problem. You see people, they sleep, sleep, sleep. They wake up, they eat, and they go back to sleep. Sleep is a, can be a snare. Number two, television can be a snare. Television can be a snare. You sit down, you watch one movie, you watch the second movie, the third, the fourth, the fifth. You are watching life go by. Television can be a snare to somebody. Number three, Facebook can be a snare to so many people, especially, well, let me just, just say social media, uh, Instagram, um, to, yeah, 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 Snapchat. My youth are threatening me. Pastor, if you get on Snapchat, we'll leave Snapchat for you. So I left Snapchat for them. Amen. But I'm on Facebook. Facebook can be a snare. Hallelujah. Uh, Zuckerberg did Facebook for good things, but uh, unfortunately, people are taking it to be their full-time job. Number four, are you writing these things down? Loyalty issues. Loyalty issues can be a snare. There are people because of so-called loyalty issues in quotes. Uh, it can be a snare. It can, be, it can stop them from serving God because maybe ex, some, somebody they are best friends with is not so they don't want to look bad especially among the young people because they don't want to look bad so you know so loyalty issues can be a snare because you know you can't serve God because you don't want to offend this person that person number five relationships can be snares relationship can be snares I'm yet to see a man or a woman who got married especially women and their relationship with God remain the same I'm yet to see it now, maybe later, it can pick up later. It can pick up later. But their relationships, it kind of slow. You see it. Their commitment level dwindles. You see it, sir. You will see it, you know. But after some time, it can pick up a little bit. Uh -huh. Relationships. Relationships. I know somebody who, who stopped coming to church because the mother came from Africa. I said, no, we don't go to that kind of church. We are Catholics. So she stopped. And she needs something big from God. See, Pastor, my heart is there, but my mother said relationships can be a snare. There are cultural snares. These are things God I didn't tell you what to preach. But God was downloading these cultural snares. Some of us, we are here. We are in Abuja. We are in Lagos. But there are some bondages. Some wrong Patterns of beliefs that we're raised with that is still plaguing us. So we left Egypt, but Egypt is still in us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We left Egypt a long time ago, but there's still Egypt in us. Glory to Jesus. If you are here, maybe you're a man, you're a woman, and you believe that a woman is a second class woman, let me see your hands up. Nobody, but your actions. Nobody will raise up their hands, but by their actions, they say they don't say it, but they act it like you are second class. When I'm talking, take a pen and write notes. This is the boss talking. These are cultural snares. Denominations can be snares. Denominations can be snares. I don't want to get into that. Education as good. And as beautiful as education is, it can be a snare. But I want to tell you, I don't care how red you are, how many chains of degrees you have. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you are the starkest, you are the most illiterate person in the whole world. Your soul has been darkened. Are you hear what I'm saying? Education can be a snare. Offenses can be called, and this, I mean, hey, pastor, you know what I'm talking about. If you are not even a pastor, you are a general pastor. Yeah. Offenses, solid. You hope, hold people in captivity. 
offenses, they won't let go. You say, over my dead body. You say, over my dead body. Offenses. Number 10, unforgiveness. They are related. Number, uh, number, uh, number 10, unforgiveness, yes. Number 11, pride. Pride. I know pride is one thing that everybody sees in you, but you don't see it in yourself. You know, if you, God forbid, if your enemy has cancer, people will see it. But when pride is in place, everybody sees it, but you don't see it. Pride. Then, of course, money can be a snare. Money can be a snare. When money becomes the God, and related to that money is the issue of fear, the fear factor, the fear of tomorrow, you know. Let me pile it up. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Let me pile it up. Let me pile it up. But the Bible says that money has wings. Prosperity has wings. It can fly away. Glory be to Jesus. Number 12 or number 13. Public opinion can be a snare. Public opinion. And this public opinion thing is something we have to fight every time. That is why most organizations, they have public, public relations departments. Full well-staffed public relations department because i mean you'll be surprised you'll be surprised what is going on on the outside there amen number for 13 guilt guilt can be a snare somebody does something three years ago two years ago six months ago you have begged god for forgiveness god has forgiven you but even you yourself you won't let go you won't forgive yourself you just won't let go and walk in the liberty you know that god has given to you amen Glory be to Jesus. Guilt, guilt. And this thing is a mindset. It is a mindset. It is a mindset. Um, number 14, 15, position or status. The, some, there are some pastors, for example, excuse my, my French, the worst things that happened to them was that they became a pastor. There are some pastors now, you know what I'm saying, sir? If you don't introduce them properly, they have a problem with you. They will give they will say give the microphone to somebody introduce me properly you have to use all those terminologies the man of the moment the mover and the shaker of society holy ghost buddhosa you are nothing you are just nothing you are just sand with breath in your nostrils <laughs> hallelujah status position can become snare listen i've been passing for a while satanic vows that people make and listen to me, and I'm going to break it down a little bit. Satanic vows, you know, some people, uh, there's what they call blood covenants. Some do stupid blood covenants. You know what I'm talking about? And they say because they're in love, they do some crazy, funny things. It's a snare. You can't move it forward. Then some people, especially women, girls, I feel like those from Christian background, they tell themselves, any man that first get physically intimate with me is the man I must marry. Satanic vows. He may not be the right person. Hello? They'll say anybody who first gets physically intimate with me is the person I must marry. Who told you that? He can become a snare. He may not be the right person for you. He may not be the right person for you. Or some, because a man has spent money for them, or they have spent money they are committed. Say, ah, no, this is the, after all you have done for me, he may not be the right person. These are snares. So be careful the kind of promises you make. You think it's as casual. Look, there was no written document, sir. There was no written contract between Jacob and Esau that I give you my porridge and you give me your bedroom. There was no written contract. There was no lawyer in attendance. They didn't have to take it to the what's it called in the, in the bank eh? not republic it was just between them and but god honored it so be careful the kind of promises you make they can become snares to you oh i must marry you if i don't marry you i die hello pastor joshua has come again I'm sorry. Did I kill your taste? Amen. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. I think that's about 15 snares I give to you like that. Keep that. 16, right? Uh -huh. In two minutes, God gave me 16. You go and add your own. Praise Master Jesus. Once again, let's join our hands together for Jesus. 
for what he has brought our way tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. One more thing, two more things. We'll receive our offering very quickly. No, uh, we'll celebrate with two of our own, two of our workers. Today's their birthday, and we have to celebrate with them. Uh-oh, somebody's looking at me. <laughs> we have, I think, the youngest usher in the house, Sister JJ. Woohoo! Jesu Jamiloju. I know she prefers that. <laughs> she prefers Jesu. She wants, I think, people can call this name. Jesu Jomiloju. How many people can call that? Eh? eh? Did I get it right? I got it right. Now don't try and confuse me. I got it right. Amen. Jam those hands together about Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. And uh, I think Brother Emmanuel is here too. Today's Brother Emmanuel's birthday. Emmanuel Allison from the technical department. Come on, stand here. Come on, come on. Is he, is he in the house? I thought I saw. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come this way. You don't get to see this man all the time because he's always behind the camera. And it takes a high level of discipline to stand behind the camera. Because I, I worked camera one time in my church in Tulsa. After two weeks, my pastor removed me. He said, no, Joshua, you don't belong there because I'm behind the camera and I'm, I'm praying, do it, do it like Pastor said, no, 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 this is not going to work. Come, 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 come. He took me out of there. Because I'm not recording anything. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, do you mind cutting the cake together? You don't mind, right? It doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Besides, she's 16, too. So you can't think that she's 16. Oh, you are 17 now. Oh, you turned 17 today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She thinks she's grown. <laughs> Even while she was 16, she kept telling me she's grown. Pastor, I'm grown. I'm a big girl. I said, okay, I will hear one of these days. Please, let the leaders of the house, the mothers, the fathers, please come out. Please, uh, matron, men president, elder, please, let's surround them. Her mom is not here. Went back to Nigeria. Please, let's just stand behind them and show them some love. Please, 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 where are you? Where are you at? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Come on, come on. Don't be standing. Come close. Come close. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Where is the cameraman? Where is the... Oh, my goodness. No, no. He's not, he's not the cameraman. Where is the church camera? Ah, amen. Praise Master Jesus. Please, come not the uh, wedding. Uh, as, as a wedding. It is prophetic in Jesus. Okay, don't worry. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. All right. Praise the Lord. Doctor Musa will come and conduct the wedding. The, the, the birthday cake. Take the night, both of you. Amen. May God add more yes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us uh, cut this cake. Let's say. J, A, E, E, S, S, S U, U, S. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, rise up as you sing happy birthday song with them and for them. Hallelujah. You ready? One, two, three, go. Happy birthday. Come on, church. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless 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 you. Hey, 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 somebody shout hallelujah. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday. Please show them some love and go back to your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So finally, rise up and let's receive our offering very quickly. Um, please, on Friday, the man of God will be here. All things being equal for the prayer mountain. So please, I uh, want to encourage us to be here. Uh, workers, of course, 6.30 to pray. But we start the program at 7 p.m. Okay? 
I believe it's going to be powerful. It's going to be glorious. Come on, somebody say a big amen now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us see our offering very quickly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I pray that your offering will speak on your behalf tonight. Your offering will call your name in the high places of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that all your expectations shall be exceeded. In the name of Jesus. Every silent tears you have been shedding privately, they come to an end tonight in the name of Jesus. Every storms, 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 wherever, whatever may be the source, ceases in your life tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above every name, I see the Lord giving you a new testimony. You are wearing some new dancing shoes. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is getting a new name tonight. Somebody is getting a new name tonight. From now you shall be called Victor. You shall be called Sister Favor. You shall be called Brother Breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. The God of restoration will restore you tonight. Can somebody give me a better amen? As you go home tonight, the Holy Ghost will continue the ministration. It will open your eyes to see. It will open your ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. And your testimony shall be perfect. I say your testimony shall be perfect. Your testimony shall be perfect. Your testimony shall be complete. In the name of Jesus. As you come on Friday, you will return with a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Unto you be all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Once again, man of God, thank you for coming, brother Ivan. You are blessed. I look forward to seeing you on Friday again. Brothers and sisters, thank you. The board members, let me see you guys before you go for like five, ten minutes. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest. Amen. Surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Seven glorious hallelujah. 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 You are blessed in Jesus name. Amen.